the girls have gone off to crochet at the marina there's a little group that forms and gathers and i'm going for a, a wander there's a hill just nearby the marina so uh for the mosque and i'm just going to go and see what we can see Okay, marina and looks like we're going to be here for a few weeks so when you're on a marina it's a good opportunity to, to get some boat work done and uh, some maintenance and since we're at the marina we don't have to use our dinghy now the dinghy is used four times a day and it's often run up on the beach uh, often rubbed against rocks and the rocks here in turkey are very um, very sharp and uh, so we're going to um, give our little dinghy a bit of love I've just cleaned it and uh, I'm going to take off the boards on the inside and give them a paint but uh, I need to find some repair kit for it because along here the rocks and uh, barnacles have really played havoc it's actually not too bad but uh, it's a vital it's a vital piece of equipment for us So these boards are <clears throat> pretty stuffed and I think they'll probably end up getting swollen and all the rest of it so we'll give them a nice coat of paint and we've been go donated some paint from one of our sailing friends Chuck so we'll put that on and we'll leave them dry out first. gonna make a little hole so we can get the epoxy in there nicely so it'll stay the only trouble is it's feeling like it's quite damp still I can see the water so I'm gonna leave this for a day or two to dry out right so this morning uh, I've got my boards out of the um, out of the dinghy and they're nice and dry so we're off to the um, hard stand yard to um, sand these up and give them a paint so a couple of coats of paint on the uh, floorboards of the dinghy and they look good looks a bit rough but I strengthened the back with some epoxy filler which is on the uh, bottom of the transom which always gets scraped on rocks in the beach so um, yeah, that should do the job. Right, today we're going to have some dumplings so that'll be the evening dinner evening meal but um, just a little bit of preparation and that is making our dough really really simple but it needs a bit of kneading to make the gluten all nice and um, stretchy and all that sort of stuff nice and silky so uh, the simplest dough is just regular flour 
and water but um, it's a matter of making it uh, just the right consistency and no recipe is going to um, tell you exactly how much water to flour it's just a feeling so um, yeah needs to be kneaded for about 10-15 um, minutes I'll show you so we just use some uh, regular flour and just bread flour and um, I'm using about three cups we don't want it too wet so the trick is to pull it out before it gets too sticky Flat. this is where it is all sticky close up of this it's about 10 minutes of that and you don't want it to get sticky so when it starts getting sticky just a little sprinkle of flour it looks like that and this evening it'll look even nicer yeah I have 500 grams mince so usually apparently according to our Chinese friends um, it's made with pork mince we can't get pork here in turkey because it's a muslim country so i'll be using beef mince or chicken mince i've added one egg uh, about a thumb sized piece of fresh ginger grated finely some garlic about three to four gloves some sea salt a little bit of chili pepper i'm gonna grate some cauliflower so everything needs to be relatively fine and over here we have got fresh herbs. I'm making the most of the yummy fresh herbs we get here in Turkey. I've got dill, parsley and spring onions. And I've also got some broccoli which I'm going to finally chop and a grated carrot. So that's about it. And then you mix all the whole shamonti up and it's going to be ready for the filling. For a little bit more liquid I usually add a little bit of oil, olive oil or sesame oil if you have and a little bit of soya sauce. We use soya sauce as a dipping sauce, so I don't really put all that much in it. And then I mix that really well. Tim is a real man and uses his hands. I don't really like eating meat and I don't like touching it. <laughs> so I'm being a nanny and use a wooden spoon. So this is our dipping sauce here for the dumplings and I have finely grated a thumb sized piece of ginger and one big garlic clove, we finely squashed or chopped and then um, soya sauce and balsamic vinegar. So I use a shot glass this size, you can see it in my hand. So I do one shot glass of this soya sauce and one and a half balsamic vinegar. So when Yvette first do that, she said she's doing approximately half half. But here everybody loves a little bit more balsamic. So I do one shot glass of soya sauce, one and a half of balsamic, grated ginger, garlic, done. You could also uh, squeeze a bit of lemon juice in, it's really yummy with the dumplings.
and I fold some water, put them in it, stop spoiling, and I just give them a little shuffle so they don't stick. Very gently. Come to the boil, and then I have a cup here, half a cup of cold water, three times. So, so that's... once it comes to a boil, I pour cold water in, half a cup, and then let it come to a boil again. Half a cup of cold water in again, and let it come to the boil. So three times, and then they are cooked. Tender dough and beautifully cooked fillings. Drown it in it. So we eat it in little bowls, and I like it with a spoon. It's a family favorite. Well, keeping in with this uh, food series, today I'm making a chicken pie in our Bavaria oven. And um, cooking the chicken first, I'm going to barbecue it because A, it's really stinky in the, um, in the galley and I figured barbecuing the chicken uh, for the pie might just give it a bit more flavour. So I might have said that this little magma barbecue does an amazing job and especially with chicken because chicken for me is pretty dangerous to cook uh, as far as food safety and getting it nice and hot but this is brilliant chicken is done Right, so skipped a few processes, but three or four tablespoons of flour, sauteed off the onions and carrots, added the diced chicken, teaspoon or so of salt to taste, and yeah, thickened it up. A little bit of uh, milk, well, coconut milk in this case. Store-bought pastry, going in these and some little muffin tins. Alrighty, so I forgot to tell you, um, our Bavaria oven has three settings, which is off, low and high. And I think high is around about 180 degrees, so uh, biff it in at that and um, see what happens. So, the proof is in how well the bottom is cooked. The proof oh. is in the bottom. Oh Look my at god. That. Perfect. Right, so what are we cooking tonight? One of our favorite family recipes and Tim got this given many many years ago by a colleague, colleague. and it's called chicken mabeya and we have had it at home at least once a week well not at least but about Often. once a week yeah, on yeah. and off but um, it's really tasty and everybody loves it and it suits the, bo the boat oven so what we have bought is chicken thighs without the bones, but you can do it with chicken legs too or whatever cut you prefer. You could use chicken breast, but that's what we like. And I've sprinkled dried oregano, one tablespoon, over, ready. And we have got two gloves of garlic, which I have already squished. Uh, squished. Sprinkle it over. And we have got half a cup of prunes cut up. These are pitted prunes. Cut up in little pieces. And half a cup of um, olives. So the recipe states green stuffed olives, but we always just use whatever we have. And we have got capers. So capers, one tablespoon. I'm always generous with them because I really like capers. It's quite a sweet and sour dish, isn't it? Mm. So it's got the saltiness of 
olives and capers, but the sweetness of uh, prunes. So then we need olive oil. A quarter of a cup. And they might have to improvise with this a bit, depending on how much chicken you do. Like when you only cook for two people, obviously, you would have to reduce the amount of what you use. And sometimes I use more if we have friends around. We need balsamic vinegar, a quarter of a cup. It's a very flexible dish, isn't it, though? Yeah. This is the first Turkish balsamic vinegar I've bought. We'll see how it tastes. So usually in a home oven, the top of a chicken gets um, really nice and brown and how would you crispy? Uh, crispy. Yep. Uh, boiled oven doesn't really quite do the job, but the liquid obviously um, steams the liquid. This is wine, quarter of a cup. Usually we use white wine, but we don't have any, so we will have to do. So it's about halfway up the meat, or three quarters, the liquid, so you can play it by ear a bit. And then of course salt and pepper. So we use good sea salt if we can get our hands on it, or Himalayan salt, Himalayan sea salt. So here's our chicken mobaya, all caramelized and yummy. Best enjoyed with? little glass of red and a few potatoes so one of the things we are doing on a regular basis on the boat is baking two kind of standard cakes for us and one is banana cake because we always seem to end up with less than ideal looking bananas and I don't like wasting food so banana bread it was when they first turned brown so we need bananas obviously I'm gonna use all of them um, because nobody is going to eat them and they can be generous. Mixing bowl, our baking tray. This is also our roasting tray on the boat, so we have to multi purpose. We need two eggs, so three to four bananas, a packet of baking powder here in Europe, they have good packages. I also use a package of vanilla sugar, but you don't need to use that. Uh, half a cup of milk, I use almond milk because I can't have dairy but you can use normal milk. Eight tablespoons of butter. Again, I'm not supposed to have dairy, so I use olive oil, but you can use any other, like canola oil or whatever you have. And flour, I use gluten-free flour. So this is a new gluten-free Turkish flour that I haven't tried yet, so I have all my fingers crossed it works out. But I'm trying to use the inflammation in my gut, so I have to be a bit careful. Also what I add is chocolate chips to make it yummier. And half the cake I sprinkle some walnuts on because I really love them, but most of the family don't. <laughs> so I've just mashed up the mushy bananas. Of milk, you can use either dairy or alternative milk or water even. Just put a whole packet of this in, which is a little bit more than a teaspoon. It's quite runny. Hmm. So, how long has this been in? One hour. One hour. And this oven doesn't have a thermostat, and it pretty much goes on 180 odd degrees. Stick comes out clean. Yori. Okay. Better put the belly on. Mostly the bread in um, Turkey is super cheap and pretty delicious. Um, like 35 cents a loaf for the basic um, bread that seems to be everywhere. We call it bunny rabbit bread because it looks like a bunny rabbit when you uh, cut it and slice it. 
but uh, occasionally we do like to make our own one. And this is a recipe that I used based on a village bread that we bought um, in the Gorczyk Wilderness Park. And it is super easy and it's so delicious. Um, hardly, there's, there's no kneading. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. Salt. Good dish of that. Sugar. Just for the yeast to feed on. And a packet of yeast. Uh, some oil. Good old plug. So this dough we want it to be really sticky, but not runny. Yeah, it's been about an hour and our dough is our dough is riz and these with some brown paper some cooking paper rather yeah I'll just give this a bit of a stir down so I'm ready to put in the tins So these have risen nicely, oven's hot, about 180, and then they go for about 40 minutes. Okay. One, two, pretty nice looking loaves. 